Mr. Colson, of course we want justice, and we want justice in the American prison system. But we don't just want justice there. We also need to consider all of those forces that have worked to create economic justice outside of the prison system. So the children in inner cities, as well as children in some rural areas, are really going to have an opportunity to get a real job and not be tempted into the criminal activity that will almost certainly lead them into prison. This is not a question about who is more in favor of justice. You can support justice on the basis of civil principles, constitutional principles of equality for all of us, or in addition, you can add a religious motive. But the assertions that you seem to be making is that somehow, unless we really gird ourselves with a religious worldview, we cannot make decisions about justice. I think that's wrong. As you know, we've sued the prison fellowship in court, including in Iowa, in a case we won, to shut down a system which, in our view and in the judge's view, uh, was an effort 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to evangelize people into the Christian faith. This should not be subsidized by tax dollars or the support of the state of Iowa that has a diversity of religious viewpoints, and a judge agreed. We don't object and, in fact, have worked to get volunteer chaplains into prisons, but not to have them paid for by all of the people. And in that sad case, we thought the justice line was on the side of not giving special privileges and money to one ministry at the expense of other prisoners. Of course, we're against sexual trafficking. It's good that President Bush spoke to the United Nations and passed some laws, but there have been only a handful of prosecutions against sexual traffickers in the United States in the last 10 years. There has to be more than that. And it does not have to be based on biblical teachings. It does not have to be based on the teachings of any other holy scripture. It has to come from a sense that we are all in this together. All 2,000 religious groups in this country, all 20 million atheists and free thinkers and humanists are in this together. We have to find the shared values that make it possible to make justice not just role in the prisons, but role in our communities, to make sure that women's rights are protected, not just if someone is about to enslave them, but if they are working in bad jobs for low pay, or if they do not have the rights that would have been granted to them under principles like the Equal Rights Amendment, which the President does not support. Okay, uh, Chuck Colson, your rebuttal. As Mr. Lynn well knows, uh, he did not win that case in Iowa. It was won only to the extent we couldn't take state funds, which we didn't want to take anyway. The state had put that in to the RFP that we bid on and gave it to us for vocational services. What he hasn't told you is that we've cut the recidivism rate, according to a study done by the University of Pennsylvania, to 8% compared to 67% nationally, and that's because we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ transforms a person's life. We gave those inmates, every one of whom was voluntary, the chance to take part in it, no coercion, no pressure, no religious test. And uh, it was upheld in the Eighth Circuit, everything except the question of funding. So we're running nine of these units in America today with huge success, and we're only doing it, as I think Mr. Lynn would have to confess, because we're Christians. Uh, if I weren't a Christian, I wouldn't be working for justice in the prison at a very modest salary, giving away all my book royalties. I'd be out practicing law like Mr. Lynn is, making a lot of money. I do this because my faith compels me to do it. Right. And the thing about the American system is that it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful way in which we have balanced. Jefferson, of course, in the famous letter about the separation of church and state to the Danbury Baptist was talking more about a federalism question. He thought it was up to the states to make that regulation. Professor Dreisbeck at American University has documented this well. I believe very much in separation of church and state. Keep the government out of our business, but the public has a right as Christian citizens to make their views known. And as far as public office is concerned, there is no religious test in our Constitution. So certainly there's no test that says you can't be religious, nor is there inherently, as you have suggested, Mr. Lynn, a conflict between a constitutional consensus and a biblical understanding. Quite to the contrary. John Adams said, we have no government armed in power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Our constitution was made only for a religious and moral people, wholly inadequate from the government of any other. And when you look around the world and see the countries in which 
religion has been most viciously persecuted, it is because a tyrant wants absolute power. And if a people are obedient to a higher call in their lives, to the God who created us, the God of nature and nature's God, as Jefferson put it in the Declaration of Independence, then we will always be free. Without that, we are very likely to end up in slavery as Bishop Jackson's families and friends would have if it were not for Wilberforce and Martin Luther King who urged those laws be changed.